Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we are going to be going over my setup for Low Life Devotion Ladle Mana Stacking Paladin Hammered In. So, um, this build was a ride. Turns out the ladle, if you don't know the Alchemist Ladle, it works very, very well with Devotion. So if you want to play a much tankier version of this build, quote unquote, right, I would heavily suggest checking out Harry the Pig's version, the older version, and then of course swapping whatever wand he has and replacing it with a alchemist ladle like I have, because turns out ladle is just absolutely insane with devotion as you get most of your flat from devotion, meaning that that percentage more damage is very effective for your smites, as you can tell. Now, why am I in life without Exanguinous? That is because of Font of the Erased. Font of the Erased is a very complicated ring, but essentially the TLDR, if you just want to know the TLDR before I go into the depth of it, is you are swapping your HP value, you're getting rid of your HP in favor of Ward. And that is because you can gain an insane amount of ward on hit. So like for instance right now, the build I'm currently playing has well over 120 flat ward per hit, right? So for instance, every single time my smite hits an enemy, every single time my hammer throw hits an enemy, which is a lot, right? I will gain 120 ward instantly per hit. Now, of course, this is up to the cap of our missing life, but thankfully we are, you know, playing a sacrifice setup with our smite, meaning that we sacrifice life every single time we cast smite, right? And of course, as well, we have a current uh, health missing affix as well, just for, you know, when we're sitting in town and stuff to actually have our life missing. And of course, we're missing all of our mana because guess what? We're playing a devotion build. So we want to be missing our mana anyways. So this all comes together. And not only do you have insane damage, thanks to Ladle, you also have insane recovery. Like I said, the main reason to do this with Font of the Erased is to abuse the fact that you get an absolute insane amount of recovery. Like if you're watching the footage and I'm taking damage, uh, you'll see that like I'll instantly go back up to 3k like instantly. Now, of course, uh, I do have a heal component on my smite currently, meaning that sometimes I will heal up a little bit of life. But as you can tell, my numbers as they jump around, I will always stay around that 3,500-ish HP value, as you can tell. And it's kind of interesting because I also get to abuse endurance a little bit. I'm actually capped endurance uh, percentage, and that's only because of an accident, right? Because, like, Devotion has endurance on it and stuff like that. So overall, the build proved to me it's actually really tanky for the most part. Even though I'm dual wielding, I'm not armor stacking, I don't have block, but like with all of that missing, like I'm still very tanky for a uh, you know a build like this. Now the only thing we have to do is just stack a lot of life, stack some damage, and font of the erase is good to go. Now I want to point out. I do have a tier seven minus mana cost roll on one of my font of the erase. I have minus five. You can get away with two fonts with minus three or like one font with minus four around there. You'd have to get a little bit of mana regen though if you go for minus four. And my gear is kind of bad, I'll be honest. I don't have that much throwing attack speed as you can tell in the footage. I'm missing throwing attack speed on both of my rings. That's actually one of the problems with Font of the Erase is you kind of need to land a decent one before you can set it up. But if you don't have a good Font of the Erase, like I said, I would heavily suggest just checking out Perry's version and just upgrading it with the ladle as that will be just sufficient as well. But if you do want to make the swap to the low life version, which I think has superior sustain, uh, it's definitely the way to go. Now, as you can tell, I am dual wielding in this clip. That's because I'm using a katana. That's to grab the throwing attack speed at the top of the uh, at the top of the sentinel tree. You don't actually need that if you actually hit throwing attack speed on one of your rings, right? With the weaver's well setup, meaning that if you do that, you can actually go for a shield and become significantly tankier than I am in the footage. Now, one thing that I would improve if I had the ability to change my gear in any way. I would try to get some intelligence in places that I have mana. So like for instance, on my chest here, 
how to replace this percentage mana roll with like tier five intelligence or tier six intelligence to get a little bit of ward retention. Cause as you tell, whenever I'm not hitting stuff, my ward value goes down a little bit. So just getting a, a small smidge of ward retention would increase the quality of life when you're doing monoliths significantly so. But overall, this is a fun build. If you haven't already, I'd heavily suggest leave a like on the video and subscribing to the channel as that's the best way of supporting me and it's the best way to show other people that this build is great. So now let's go in game and talk about it in more detail, shall we? All right, here we are in game with the character. So let's go over skills real quick. So for our smite here, we actually take two points travel to blinding flash, but eventually if you had more plus points, you put points into this. Then we take two points travel into piety, one point into order of Lagan, which converts our, you know, our smite to lightning, which is great. Then we grab one node into unbalanced scale. This makes it when you are clearing, you actually get a decent amount of clear because all those lightning bolts from the smites, they all shotgun with each other. And that's a lot of hits because we get 120 ward per hit. So this like instantly caps your ward like instantly when you like run into a pack, which is great. Then five points into sacrifice with a gigantic more damage modifier. And we also want to be sacrificing as much HP as possible so that our ward stuff kicks in. One point travel into atonement. We actually don't want this point, but it is important so we can grab conviction so we can get that base crit. I'm not crit capped. Eventually you could invest into this build a little bit more and get crit capped. That would be great. Then three points travel into holy fire. Then four points into conflagration for the more damage against electrified enemies because if you hold all it turns to electrify, which is great. It's smite hammer throw here. TLDR same hammered in setup, just the minus six here, getting the extra projectiles, iron spiral, hammer vortex, the usual stuff that you'd normally get on this kind of build. I went for attack speed, and then of course guardian zeal to give me a little bit of extra crit because, like I said, I'm not crit capped, so it'd be nice to have a little bit more crit, right? Now. Uh, I don't think I actually have Ignite on hit, so maybe it would be worth grabbing one point to Raya's Legacy because you want to have more negative values for Mad Alchemist Ladle, I believe. So then other than, oh, no, no, we have a 4% Ignite chance. Maybe we grab a few points in this. We'll see. But uh, this is your stereotypical Holy Aura Tree for like a throwing attack setup. The attack speed here, attack speed here, crit chance here. And then, of course, we grab the elemental res to cap out our gear. And that's pretty much it for Holy Aura. Reversal, stereotypical reversal setup. We're just spamming the buff for the attack speed and the increased damage taken from enemies, which is great. We also take one point into the time rot chance here because time rot is an ailment which makes it so that the Mad Outcome Slater ladle gives us even more damage, which is great. Then, of course, here... We have our sigil setup. TLDR sigils, its entire job is to give us increased damage and to also remove our mana bar so that, of course, we can, you know, get the flat damage from our smite with devotion. Now, eventually, if you were to play the block version of this build, you could like get rid of these this flat here, maybe get rid of Last Wish, and then put points into Sign of the Guardian to get a bunch of free block for free when you do eventually swap over to a shield, because I do think a shield is better than this setup once you actually get the throwing attack speed on your rings, unlike me. Now, that's pretty much it for skills. Let's talk about passives that are important. So like I said, mainly Blade Master is important. You want to be grabbing as much HP on the tree as possible. The dual wield node, because I'm dual wielding. Uh, Axe Roar gives us, gives us extra hits on single target for, of course, you know, for smite purposes. Five points travel and abyssal. <coughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Oh, but uh, sorry about that. But the abyssal endurance here for the HP, of course, and the fizz res, the void res. Eight points into conviction for the pen, the lightning pen, because we want as much lightning penetration as possible. Three points travel defiance, like HP. We grab HP here, eventually HP here, the crit chance. I have one point in this to apply a bleed on this target for the ladle. Eventually, uh, we're taking 12 points here, 12 points here for the movement speed, because I like movement speed. And with the rest of the points here that I have, I'll put one point to faith armor, then 12 points into prayer agent for as much flat HP as humanly possible, right? Because we want all the flat like we can possibly get. And that's pretty much it for the passives. Now let's talk about the idols. So idols, of course, for smart idols, obvious res idols. And then of course, for our blessings, a little bit more complicated. Uh, for black sun, void res is great for HP. 
Crit Multi is fine too if you're lacking Crit Multi. Lightning Shred or Mana from Ending the Storm, either is fine. Mana would make you tankier because you'd get more sustain, while, uh, while Lightning Shred just gives you more damage. Reign of Dragons here, Crit Avoidance, of course. Uh, Age of Winter, Percent Armor, and then Spirits of Fire, Flat Armor. Now let's talk about gear. So for uh, mandatory uniques, of course, Mad Alchemist Ladle, this is very mandatory. You don't have to have the crit multi on it, but that's just what I have on it. Devotion is, of course, mandatory. You don't need the flat mana on it, but uh, like a de base devotion works just as well. And of course, Font to the Erase here. I do have a tier seven minus mana cost setup, but you can get away with like one minus three and then getting a little bit more mana region on your gear. Same thing with the other font of the erase. My other font is like kind of meh. So like I didn't get throwing attack speed. I didn't get minus mana cost, which sucks, but it's like whatever, right? Belt here, uh, you could have mana regen there on the belt. I don't have that. HP, and like I said in the intro, you could probably replace that increased mana for intelligence to get a little bit of word retention for quality of life. Running a katana with shred armor on hit, shock on hit, crit and crit multi, of course, to give us an insane amount of crit, which is great. And of course, it gives us throwing attack speed in the tree gloves here throwing attack speed we have one mod of the current health lost is ward per second so that of course we have a little bit of sustain of course the life the mana of course you could probably get crit instead of that mana that would be probably be pretty good eventually exalted throwing attack speed gloves boots here uh crit avoid hp intelligence movement speed pretty good uh relic here Eventually, you'd want a good base, but just plus two smite, spell crit, crit multi, stuff like that, HP, and you want at least one source of frailty so that, of course, you can apply frailty to the enemies, take 18% less damage, and also get another multiplicated modifier from Mad Alchemist Ladle. And that's pretty much it for the gear. That's pretty much it for the character. With all that being said, this has been Dread. Off to go do something else. Bye.